Hello and welcome to Simply Beautiful Sourdough. I am Nancy Ann. Today we are going to score a geometric pattern on a grid with 70% hydration dough. This is 5% higher than my normal 65% hydration. So are we going to wind up with beautiful oven spring or are we going to have a gorgeously patterned pancake? Let's find out. <music> So here I am removing the plastic wrap that sat as it fridge proofed overnight. That's my Bread Basics bread sling. It's a nine and a half inch bread sling. I love it. But as of this recording, they are out of stock on the website. I think Christmas knocked them out of commission on that for a couple of weeks until they can replace it. You can check my affiliate link down there and see if it works. If it does, be sure and use my code SIMPLY10 to save 10%. So here we are doing the old flip rooney um, we got that bread sling at the bottom there. That's going to help lift it into the Dutch oven and back out of the Dutch oven. Don't burn your hands. It's great. And now I'm going to remove that banneton, but I'm sticking a little bit. So comes out. I'm a little distorted, but it's okay. I was able to push it down. I don't know if it stuck because uh, it was higher hydration than normal. I will say my shaping was good, so I can't blame the shaping for the sticking. Brushing off any excess rice flour so that when I put the water on right here, it doesn't uh, make it grainy or pilly on top. And I'm just making sure evenly damp all over the loaf. Um, this will help that rice flour to stick. Um, and, and I really need to see the rice flour in this scoring in particular, because if you can't see where you're supposed to score, you're in trouble. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna distort the design. Washing and drying my hands while it soaks in for a couple of seconds, just so it doesn't get too awful gummy. And now I'm sprinkling on my bread flour, paying particular attention to the edges uh, where I really need to be able to see my scoring. I have to see it all over. I don't wanna lose my design. And still on the edges, I think I was starting to run out of bread flour a little bit in the shaker. It wasn't quite as full as it. I prefer it to be. And now I'm going to spread that on with my hands, make sure it's even. And I'm, like I said, I'm trying to make sure I have plenty around the bottom. So I'm taking my brush to push it up around the bottom. But I lose my mind a little here and I start brushing across the top of the loaf, which makes absolutely no sense. Should be using my hand. I don't want to brush it off. I want to keep it on and pat it down evenly. So while, while I'm doing this foolishness until I figure out what I've done, I will say this is a 500 gram loaf. So it's pretty big. 70% uh, um, uh, hydration. Uh, I did it a little bit higher than my normal 65 to see if I could improve my crumb. Uh, I also was hoping it wouldn't spread too much as I scored with that higher hydration. You can't learn about things unless you try. Now I figured it out. Used my hands. All right, now I'm using my dental floss to make one line straight down the center there. And then I'm going to do lines evenly spaced across. I'm going to say these mm, about three quarter inch away maybe a couple of centimeters for you European folks all the way across. You want to stay pretty even. I'm not measuring or anything. I'm not going to be that exact. And pardon the hair in the way, working on camera height still. It's this, oh, I, I should have just pulled my hair back. And now I'm doing the same distance apart going horizontally. And you really want to keep these pretty straight. Uh, if you start getting, you know, a little bit off kilter there, you're going to have diagonal lines and this is going to be much more difficult to do. You're never going to have it perfect, but you, but you want to try and be mindful uh, that you're getting these even and fairly straight. Okay, now it's time to score. So I'm going to do these little shapes. They're peaked at the top and the bottom and they're straight on the sides. I don't know what these shapes are called and nobody else can tell me what they're called either. So... If you know what these shapes are called, let me know. They remind me a little bit of a harlequin, but I don't think they quite are. So there we go. From the top down on the right and from the down to the uh, diagonal to the top on the left. And now we're going to go straight down on each side. And then I'm going to bring it down like that to peak 
uh, at the bottom. So it's peaked at the top, peaked at the bottom, and flat in the center. I'm going to do this one. Of course, the first side was already created with the first one that I made, but I'm going to do the other sides of, of that little weird Harlequin-like shape. It's just some sort of geometric shape. I have no idea what it was. I'm sure in geometry I learned, but I don't know now. So now this one is uh, offset from that because it's using that diagonal line at the bottom as its top diagonal line. The same thing here. And now we've got, you know, more sides are done as you keep going. So now that, there we go, the flat side. And I'm going to go pretty deep on these. These are my main scores, and I want them to spread kind of evenly. We're just going to do these all over the loaf. Now I'm going to go ahead and do that one. It really is difficult to do these around the edges, but I want them to break off freely. I want these to break off freely and float, and they can't do that if I don't create as much a one at the edges as I can. And if I'm not mistaken, I come back later and try and finish those, make sure that they're all hooked or that they're all, sorry, um, connected all the lines. So they come, I don't think I do them down near the very edge of the loaf though. It's just too hard. I mean, you just can't, I can't get my hand in that tight a spot. So now I'm finishing up going across this way. Almost looks like a honeycomb, doesn't it? It's not a honeycomb, but it's like a distorted honeycomb design. Uh, my hands in the way. I'm sorry. I it's it's. I try to be aware of what you guys are seeing and what I'm doing, but I have to be able to see it, or else I'm gonna mess the whole thing up. So, I I always like. Well, it's more important that I I you know show you it properly done than you actually see me do it. And I think at that point I'm thinking, gosh, did I did I mess this one up? Yeah, I looked at it real close and I realized I just made a shallow a shallow line there. So I was able to fix that, but I thought maybe I had goofed that particular design up right there. Probably because my, uh, my scoring, my marking lines weren't quite wide enough in that spot. So now I'm making this one. Oh, I went down one below. You really have to pay attention when you do these. Um, it's really easy to get overconfident while you're going and then you've just got a really goofed up design in the middle but like I always say sorry you can't see it all sorry about that um I you know you eat the you eat the evidence if you make a mistake so now I'm joining making those two lines to finish off that one and we're down here so you can see this kind of it's a honeycomb like design I guess but bees are smarter than me because theirs are much more symmetrical Still, it's kind of a cool look, though, isn't it? Don't you think? And now you can see why that rice flour is so necessary, because it really helps those. If you're going to go to all this work, I want to see it. I mean, I just want to see it. So now I'm looking at it, and I'm making sure that all of my edges are cut free from each other. Just being sure. And I'm going nice and deep on those scores. I'm going back, I'm deepening the scores because I really want to make sure that these break free from each other and they separate when, when the oven spring comes into play. I forgot to put my bracelets on for this. I normally put bracelets and rings on when I do this. I guess I'm just trying to make something, you know, make it look at, give you something pretty to look at, even though you're probably only looking at the bread. There we go. Deepening those lines all the way around. If you don't deep, get the lines deep enough, um, it could tear through the middle of your distorted honeycomb <laughs> shapes uh, and, and decide where it's going to where it's going to break instead of where you want it to, to spread and separate. And I'm paying particular attention to the ones in the middle because they're going to be on the top and they're the most important. There we go. There we go. Now see this, it's a complicated design, but it's not really difficult as long as you pay attention. And again, my big tip is don't talk. 
Um, well, unless you, you might be able to do it and talk. I can't. I mess it up every time. That's why I'm doing a voiceover. Well, that and you get better information. So there we go. All right. So now I'm looking at it going, hmm, I'm going to make sure I've cut any of these. And down there near the edge at the bottom of there, it was so hard to get in with the long. It's just, I just do better if I get in with the scissors. And you don't want it, you know, the top to be beautiful. And then you look at it from the side and whoops, you know, that tore. So why not take a couple extra seconds just to make sure everything is really, really free. Each shape is free and independent. Okay. Now we got the main design. And now I thought, I'm just going to do a little bit. I'm, I'm debating for a second. What am I going to do? So I decide I'm just going to do like little, that's like a little starburst kind of just cross. I do a cross with two diagonal lines going through, just a little starburst pattern. I know it's hard to see here, but add a little extra interest. This is where I tend to uh, have a hard time is thinking of the details. I can, I'm pretty good at coming up with an overall general design, the big stuff, but <laughs> having refined uh, details, the idea of them is tough for me. This detailed work here these little tiny things this would be so hard with a standard lump that has a handle that would be very difficult don't ask me why i skipped that one on that side i should have just gone straight across it's easy to lose track of what you've done and what you haven't done and maybe i just decided i wasn't going to do those on the side i think that's what i did but anyway that ufo lump you you couldn't do this with a standard lump it would be very difficult you have to be able to get down into the corners, use the corner of the razor. And you have so much more control when your hand is down there close to the blade. I've seen people actually hold the blade. That's crazy. Okay, here we are. All righty, let's see how the loaf made with the grid pattern turned out. It was so flat when it went in there that I'm very concerned. Oh, that actually came up quite a bit. I mean, it was, whoa, it was really flat when it went in there. That, that's looking a lot better. Alrighty. So, I think the crumb should be nice. I'm going to put it over here with its pal, and they're going to go into that 425 degree oven. I was thinking 15 minutes, but I may put it in for 20. I just want them to be nice and brown. I'm expecting this guy to rise up a little bit more in the oven because he's flattened out. I don't think he was cooked up quite all the way through, but this guy, he looks pretty good. Okay, they're gonna go in the oven and I will take a photo when it's done. And here is the geometric scored loaf. I love all the space that came in between those. You know, really got some pretty good oven spring when you think of how much space that is cumulatively. This loaf would have made a beautiful ear, wouldn't it? We are around. That's really lifted up there. I think this is going to have a nice crumb. I don't know if this is going to be eaten. We're going to share it with friends or what, but that's been pretty good to me. So pretty happy with the way this one turned out. What do you think? If you could give me your comments down below, tell me your thoughts. I love communicating with you. And if you'd like, you can subscribe. And if you'd hit the like button, that helps me a bunch. Okay, thank you very much, and thank you for watching. Thank you.